The Battle of the Bzura was the largest Polish counterattack of the German invasion of Poland, fought between the 9th and 19th of September. The battle took place west of Warsaw, near the Bzura River. It began as a Polish counteroffensive, which gained initial success, but the Germans outflanked the Polish forces with a concentrated counterattack. This weakened Polish forces and the Poznan and Pomor's armies were destroyed. Western Poland was now under German rule, 65 to 70 the battle has been described as the bloodiest and most bitter battle of the entire Polish campaign. Winston Churchill called the battle an ever-glorious struggle. Chapter 1, Background The Polish plan for defense against the German invasion, Plan West, called for the defense of the borders. This was dictated more by political than military concerns, as Poles feared that the Germans, after taking over territories they lost in the Treaty of Versailles, would try to end the war and keep those territories. While defending the borders was riskier, the Poles were counting on the British and French counteroffensive. Due to this, Army Pomors under General Władysław Bortnowski found itself in the Polish corridor, surrounded by German forces on two fronts, and Army Poznan under General Tadeusz Kutrzyba was pushed to the westernmost fringes of the Second Polish Republic, separated both from its primary defensive positions and from other Polish armies. The German offensive proved the folly of the border defense plan in the first days of the war. Army Pomors was defeated in the Battle of Bory Tukolski, and forced to retreat towards the southeast. Army Poznan, meanwhile, although not facing heavy German assaults, was forced to retreat east due to defeats of its neighbors, both of them were retreating, meaning that Army Poznan was in danger of being flanked and surrounded by the German forces. On the 4th of September, Army Poznan moved through Poznan and abandoned it to the enemy, although at this point it was not in contact with any significant German forces. By the 6th of September, armies Pomors and Poznan had linked, forming the strongest Polish operational unit in the campaign, and General Bortnowski accepted the command of General Kutrzyba. On the 7th of September, Polish forces became aware of the German push towards Lexica, which if successful could cut off the retreat route of Polish forces. By the 8th of September, advanced German troops reached Warsaw, marking the beginning of the 1939 siege of Warsaw. At the same time, German forces had lost contact with Army Poznan, and German command assumed that the army must have been transported by rail to aid Warsaw's defense, they were unaware that in fact Army Poznan, had merged forces with Army Pomors, which they considered, since its defeat at Bory Tukolski, no longer a significant threat. On the 8th of September the Germans were certain that they had eliminated major Polish resistance west of Vistula and were preparing to cross it and engage the Polish forces on the other side. Meanwhile, General Kutrzyba and his staff officers had suspected, even before the German invasion, that it would be the neighboring armies that would bear the German attack, and had developed plans at an offensive towards the south, to relieve Army Lanch. In the first week of the campaign, those plans, however, were rejected by the Polish commander-in-chief, Marshal Edward Rides Smigli. By the 8th of September Kutrzyba had lost contact with Rides Smigli, who had relocated his command center from Warsaw to Brest, due to these factors, Kutrzyba decided to go forward with his plan. His situation was dire, as German forces were close to surrounding his units, the German 8th Army had secured the southern bank of the Bzura River and the German 4th Army had secured the northern bank of Vistula, from Wachlok to Wysogrod, and its elements were attacking the rear of the armies Pomors and Poznan, from the direction of Inovrotswaf and crossing the Vistula River near Płosk. Chapter 2 – Opposing Forces Polish forces consisted of Army Poznan and Army Pomors. German forces included the 8th Army under Johannes Bloskowitz and 10th Army under Walther von Reichenau of Army Group South, elements of the 4th Army under Gunther von Kludge of the Army Group North and Air Support. Chapter 3, Battle The battle can be divided into three phases. Phase I, Polish offensive towards Strakow, aiming at the flank of the German 10th Army. Phase 2, Polish offensive towards Loix. Phase 3, 
German counterattack and eventual defeat of the Poles, with the latter's withdrawal towards Warsaw and Modlin. On the night of the 9th of September, the Polish Poznan army commenced a counterattack from the south of the Bzura River, its target being the German forces from the 8th Army advancing between Lexica and Loix, towards Strykow. The commander of Poznan army, Tadeusz Kutrzeba noticed that the German 8th Army, commanded by General Johannes Bloskowitz, was weakly secured from the north by only the 30th Infantry Division stretched over a 30-kilometer defensive line while the rest of the army was advancing towards Warsaw. The main thrust of the Polish offensive were the units under General Edmund Noel Kaunarki, known as the Noel Kaunarki Operational Group. The right wing of the offensive, in the area Lexis, included the Podolska Cavalry Brigade under Colonel L. Strzelecki, and on the left, advancing from Loix to the area of Glono, the Wielkopolska Cavalry Brigade under General Roman Abraham. These groups inflicted considerable losses on the German defenders from the 30th Infantry Division, and the 24th Infantry Division, with some 1,500 German soldiers killed or wounded, and an additional 3,000 lost as prisoners during the initial push. The cavalry brigades supplemented with TKS and TK3 reconnaissance tanks moved to threaten the flanks and rear of the advancing German units. The German forces were thrown back approximately 20 kilometers and the Poles recaptured several towns, including Lexica and Piatek, and the village of Gora Shanti Malgort Sati. On 10 September, the Polish 17th Infantry Division met the German 17th Infantry Division at Malakais. The following day Polish forces continued their attack, advancing on Modlna, Plodwiny, Osa, and Glono. Initially underestimating the Polish advance, the Germans decided on the 11th of September to redirect the main force of the German 10th Army, the German 4th Army, the reserves of the Army Group South, and aircraft from 4th Air Fleet towards the Bzura. These forces included the German 1st Panzer Division, German 4th Panzer Division, and the newly formed SS Infantry Regiment Lebstandarte Adolf Hitler. German air superiority had a significant impact, making it very costly and difficult for the Poles to move units during the day. The following day the Poles reached the line Strykow o Zorkow. That day General Tadeusz Kutrzeba learned that units of Army Ludge had retreated to the Modlin Fortress, and decided to stop the offensive, instead looking to try to break through Sakaksu and the Campinos forest to reach Warsaw. Dot on the morning of 14 September, General Władysław Bortnowski's 26th and 16th Infantry Divisions crossed the Bzura near Loix. The Polish 4th Infantry Division reached the road linking Loix with Glono. At this point however, Bortnowski ordered the 26th Infantry Division to retreat. He had learned of the withdrawal of the German 4th Panzer Division from the outskirts of Warsaw, and was concerned that this Panzer Division posed a threat to his men. On 15 and 16 September, Army Pomors took up defensive positions on the north bank of the Bzura. General Stanislav Brzmot Skotniki's group was between Kutno and Zyklin, General Michał Karazwik's Tokortsevsky's units near Gabin, and parts of Army Poznan by the Bzura near Sakaksu were ready to begin their drive towards Warsaw. To encircle and destroy the Polish forces, the Germans used most of their 10th Army, including two armoured, one motorised, and three light divisions, equipped with some 800 tanks altogether. The attack from all sides on Polish positions started on 16 September, with the support of the Luftwaffe. On 15 September Poles were forced out of Sakaksu, a town on the Bzura River, and trapped in a triangle of Bzura, Vistula and German forces. The German 1st Panzer Division, after crossing the Bzura between Sakaksu and Broschau and engaging the Polish 25th Infantry Division managed to capture Ruski, but its advance was then halted. Poles began to cross the Bzura near the Vistula, north of Sakaksu, and retreat towards Warsaw. Polish forces were forced to abandon most of their heavy equipment while crossing the river. On 17 September, German heavy artillery was shelling the crossing north of Broschau, and the largest air operation of the campaign began, 
with the Luftwaffe attacking the retreating Polish forces. During the night of 17 September, the main forces of Army Poznan attacked the German forces in order to break out of the German encirclement between Witkowice and Sakaksiu. The 15th Infantry Division and Podolska Cavalry Brigade again crossed the Bzura in Witkowice. In Broschau, the 25th and 17th Infantry Divisions crossed the Bzura River. The 14th Infantry Division was concentrated in Laziska. At the same time, Army Pomors marched towards the villages of Osmolin, Kirozia, and Osiek. In the morning the Germans started their drive towards the south along both banks of the Bzura, supported by more than 300 aircraft and heavy artillery. German howitzers, taking advantage of their position on the high ground of the Vistula's right bank, shelled Polish positions for the entire day. And after two days of heavy fighting, with no ammunition or food rations remaining, further attempts at a breakout for the Poles became impossible. Chapter 4 – Aftermath In one of the biggest and most destructive battles of all times, only a few Polish units managed to break out of the encirclement. These groups entered Warsaw and Modlin, mostly around 19 and the 20th of September, crossing the Campinos Forest and fighting German units in the area. Among them were Generals Kutrzeba, Noel Kawaki, and Tokorczewski, two cavalry brigades of General Abraham, and the 15th and 25th Infantry Divisions. The remainder, which didn't manage to cross the river, with General Bortnowski, capitulated between 18 and 22 September. Polish casualties were estimated at 20,000 dead, including three generals, Franciszek Ulad, Stanislaw Grzmot Skotnicki and Miokai Boltyuk. German casualties are estimated at 8,000 dead. After the battle the remaining German divisions rushed towards Warsaw and Modlin and soon encircled both. The Bzura campaign ended in defeat for the Poles but because of the initial Polish local successes the German advance on Warsaw was halted for several days. The Wehrmacht was required to divert units from its push towards Warsaw. This enabled the Polish units defending Warsaw, and its environs to better organize their own long term, but ultimately failed, defense of the capital. The campaign also showed the importance of taking initiative, proved that horse cavalry units were still an important factor on the battlefield, and proved the importance of air superiority as well as confirmed that simple numerical superiority did still matter.